So a lot of you guys are probably wondering, whatever happened to the Tatula 80 casting video? And that's a fair question because I think I did the unboxing and analysis video on this reel like about a month ago. Now the weekend after I did the unboxing vid, I actually did take this reel out and do a casting video, but unfortunately the audio was unacceptable so I just scrapped all that footage. And then the next couple of weekends, we started having the spawn here where I live and I just wanted to go fishing. So basically I strung up the Tattoo Lady with 10 pound fluoro and I did some fishing with it. Now I didn't catch anything of any significant size, just some small buck bass, but I did get a good impression of the performance of this reel. Now this past weekend, I actually redid the casting video, but this time around, I also brought along probably one of its biggest competitors in Daiwa's own 2020 Tatula SV-103. Now both of these reels are considered finesse Tatulas, but they kind of take a different approach to, I guess, finesse performance. And that's because the Tatula 80 has a heavier spool at about 15 grams, but it has less restrictive brakes while the SV has a much lighter spool at about 13 grams, but it's got more restrictive brakes. So two different approaches to finesse by Daiwa. And of course, both of these reels are priced exactly the same at 199. They weigh about the same. They got the same spool diameter, pretty much the same line capacity. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are interested to see which reel would be the better finesse reel. And hopefully this video will answer that for you. Now before we get to that footage, I just want to show you guys something. And that is on my Tatula 80. As we all know, it's got the zero adjuster and I don't touch this. I leave it set from the factory. But it's got just a little bit of side to side play. I don't know if you guys can hear that clicking noise, but it's probably about half a millimeter of side to side play on the spool which is right where Daiwa wants it. And it's about the same with the SV as well. I definitely remember that zero adjuster was set pretty loose. Now let me show you guys the lures that I used. And none of them were over 3 eighths of an ounce. Now the first lure is the Lucky Craft Sammy 75 topwater bait. Definitely a finesse size here in America. And this lure weighs about six grams on the scale. So not even a quarter of an ounce. Now the next lure is a lure that's definitely in the bait finesse category in my opinion. And this is the Euro Tackle Z Spender Suspending Jerk Bait. And it weighs about 3.2 grams on the scale. So under one eighth of an ounce. Now the last lure is what we Americans call a finesse jig. And that is the Strike King bitsy bug and this is the quarter ounce size now since they list this at a quarter ounce its true weight is a little bit over nine grams so closer to three eighths of an ounce than a quarter ounce so for you in other countries in case you were wondering why that is the quarter ounce is probably just the jig head itself not including the skirt the hook and the weed guard and instead of casting the jig i did a pitching comparison so let me show you the footage for the first lure, and that is the Sammy 75.
Okay, so which reel do you think handled the Sammy 75 better or casted it farther? Now, in my opinion, they were both pretty equal, probably hitting somewhere over 30 yards with that little tiny topwater. Now, make sure to do about 15 casts a piece, and overall, maybe the longest cast belonged to the 80, but when you average them out, they were actually pretty equal, at least in my opinion, visually. Now, quick side note, I was actually able to go about two settings down lower on the MagForce dial on the SV, which is not surprising. Okay, so next up is going to be the footage for the Euro Tackle Z Spender Finesse Jerkbait. Okay, so visually, what do you guys think? Who handled the Euro Tackle Z Spender easier or casted it better? Now, distance wise, in my opinion, they were actually, once again, very close, probably hitting about 75 feet a piece. But I think, at least it felt this way, the SV103 felt like it handled it a little bit easier and it was a little bit more accurate. And that's that lighter spool weight coming into play. All right, let me show you the pitching comparison with the Strike King Bitsy Bug Jig.
Okay, so once again, in your opinion, which reel do you think pitched this striking Bitsy Bug Jig better? Now in my observation, visually it looked like they were pitching about the same distance while trying to keep a low trajectory and they were probably getting about 40 to 45 feet. But in my opinion, I could definitely feel that the SV-103 pitched it a little bit easier while trying to keep a low trajectory. And I think that's that spool weight advantage coming into play. Now what's strange is that I was actually able to pitch with the Mag4 style on zero on the Tatula 80, while on the SV, I think I had it up to like three or four. Anything lower than that and you would get an overrun. But yeah, when it comes down to pitching, I would take the SV over the 80. Now, just in case you're wondering, the rods I used were these exact rods you see. These are some cheap AliExpress imitation Shimano first generation Poison Adrenas. And I would consider them to be medium light powered. Now, the specs, as you can see, are they are six foot six. Line weight 8 to 16 pounds, lure weight 6 to 21 grams, but that lure weight is way off. I would say the true lure weight range on these rods is going to be about 3 grams all the way up to about 5 eighths of an ounce. There's no way this rod is handling 21 grams. And I used my typical bulk 10 pound fluorescent yellow monofilament. Okay, so when it comes to casting and pitching finesse lures, which reel is better? And to be honest, the performance, as far as distance goes, I couldn't tell a difference between them. When you average out all the casts and the pitches, they probably compare very, very similar to each other and no distinct advantage for one reel over the other, except for the SV when you get to those lighter weights and low speed presentations like pitching. It seems to handle it a little easier but not getting any extra distance over the 80. So since there's really no tangible performance advantage for either reel, why would you pick the 80 over the SV-103? Well, there are a couple of differences. Now, the first thing is that the spool on the 80 does feel faster than the spool on the SV-103, but we'll get more into that later. But the main huge advantage that this reel has over the SV is the palming comfort. Now the SV-103 frame is pretty comfortable, but when you palm them back to back, for me personally, I immediately felt one area where the 80 made the SV feel uncomfortable. And that is right here, in this section right here. So I inspected both reels. Now you can see on the SV right here that the, I guess, angle or edge is pretty sharp and abrupt. But when you look at the 80, you can see it's gradual. You got your taper right here before it actually drops off. And you can definitely feel that, at least I can, when palming these reels back to back. And in my opinion, if you found this frame to be uncomfortable, you'll really like the frame on the Tatula 80. Of course, you can still feel the brake dial, but well, that's on both reels. But this thing does palm noticeably better. And like I said before, it's probably in the top three most comfortable reels to palm, in my opinion, at least from the reels that I've owned. Now, of course, the Tatula 70, which I think is basically the JDM Alphas rebadged and repainted as a Tatula, should offer better finesse performance than either of these because it's got a smaller spool and it's probably going to be lighter as well. But it makes me wonder if Dai was actually going to sell both of these reels side by side to compete with each other. Because honestly, I don't see any advantage performance wise for one reel over the other when it comes to sheer numbers. And actually, in fact, they're still selling the original 2017 Tattoo SV as well. And that also comes in at $199. So I'm not sure what Daiwa's plans are. If they're going to try to sell all three together, if they're going to discontinue this reel or finally discontinue the old SV. But if I have to choose just one reel out of both of these two, 
honestly, I don't know which one I would pick. And that's gonna lead me to the things that I don't like about the Tattoo Lady. Okay, so what do I not like about this new Tattoola 80? Now the first thing is something that all Tattoolas have, and that's that fully exposed dial that's got the really fine sharp teeth. And because I palm like this, especially when I'm working a jerk bait or doing a walking topwater lure, this is how I hold the reel. And you can see my finger is right on that dial. So when I'm doing this, after a few casts, you can definitely feel these teeth rubbing into my finger. And that's a shame because since this reel is so light and compact, this is definitely a reel I could see myself using for jerk baits and topwaters, except for that dial. Now, the only other complaint that I have is, I'm not sure if this is with all the Tattoo 80s, but my particular reel was very loud and buzzy during the cast. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let you guys hear just how loud this reel is in this video clip. Okay, so hopefully you guys could hear that, but yeah, this reel is very loud and buzzy on the cast. Now, if any of you guys have a tattoo lady and you're experiencing the same thing, just let me know in the comments. I thought it might be the rotor getting misaligned and rubbing up against the brakes, but that's not the case. So the only thing I can think is that it's just probably a bad batch of bearings in Daiwa's Thailand factory, because once again, this reel is made in Thailand. And it's not just this reel that's using this frame that I'm having issues with loud buzzy casts. And because it's so loud and buzzy, it takes away from the smoothness that you, I guess, get accustomed to with the Daiwa T-Wing reel. Now the SV-103 was perfectly quiet and smooth. The only thing you could hear was the, I guess, slight hum of the spool and the line going through the guides. But no, this reel, it was loud. You could feel the buzzing through the frame, and it's not something that I would expect from a Daiwa T-Wing reel. So I may actually clean these bearings out to see if that solves the problem. But it didn't seem to affect the casting performance though. Now just one more thing about this Tattoo 80 before we wrap this video up, is that this is not just, I guess, a finesse reel, because even after like really long cast with a typical half ounce top water lure using 10 pound line, you still had plenty of line capacity left. In fact, I'm gonna either put a picture or a video up showing you after a really long cast how much line was left on the spool. And as you can see, there is plenty. I don't think I even casted a quarter of the line off. So you can definitely run much thicker line with this reel. So to wrap this video up, I guess this is the best way to sum up this new Tattoo 80s performance. Now in my opinion, this is not some real with groundbreaking, class shattering performance. I personally think the Corrado 150 MGL would chew it up, but what it does give you is class leading palming comfort and ergonomics with your typical Daiwa Magforce Z performance. As you can see, it does handle light lures very well. In fact, it handled that uh, 1 8 ounce jerk bait better than I thought. And if I stuck it on a dedicated lighter powered BFS rod, I'm sure it would handle it even better. But the next step for this reel is going to be battle. And I'm talking a field battle against other finesse reels, including once again, the SV-103 
and we can finally see which reel actually casts better. So be on the lookout for that. All right, guys, thanks a lot.